All right, so we got it loaded here. This is our Flagstaff SE 228. This is a used model. Uh, last year we rented a model similar to this, but it was a little bit shorter. It was, uh, I think, a 10-foot model, where this is a 12-foot model. And it's got the extra storage here in the front, which is nice. So we have a lot of stuff packed in the camper as well, because we own it now instead of renting it. We'll kind of do a review. Um, like I said, it's similar to the other one. If you've ha ever owned a camper, everything's pretty cheap on it. Plan to do a lot of little tweaking and fixing. It does come with these uh, oversized off-road tires, which uh, you can't get at your local tire store. So I called our largest supplier, Tires Pomps, and they do not carry that size in a trailer tire. The ST 235 75R15. They can get a tire that will work on here, but it won't look like that. It'll be more of like a highway ribbed tire, not a uh, not a lug tire there uh, for mud or whatever. So I didn't go through the bearings or anything. I did do a uh, a good check on it, what I call a DOT check. Make sure that the brakes worked, that the brakes weren't uh, like delaminated. Or anything just hanging around in there. I checked to make sure that the bearings weren't uh, worn out. Uh, I gave them a little bit of grease. They seemed like they were greased plenty well. Uh, made sure like the breakaway on the front here, which this breakaway cable is a little short. They got this back quite a ways here. And this, if for some reason the truck and trailer become separated, this pulls and applies the brakes to the trailer. So, and this one has two propane tanks where the other one only had one, so there's a lot of weight in the front here. The, the truck is actually squatting down quite a bit. And that's with the, the ball there flipped upside down, try to get a little bit more height to even it out. Alright, so we'll do a review once we get the thing popped up. I'll kind of show you some of the things on it again, just like I did with the last one. And like I said, the last one we just rented, so... All right, and we've arrived at Council Grounds State Park, just outside Merrill, Wisconsin. All right, so here it is all set up at our uh, site here. Sites are pretty nice. So it worked out well having all the, the stuff underneath here kind of strapped down. Um, the setup we got here, there's two batteries in there, and then we got two LP tanks, and the only thing we've used the gas for is making coffee in the morning because it's just easier and quicker. Uh, the batteries we've used for lighting, uh, both outside and in, and then charging phones and devices. So the, the front section here, that's going to be a king size. And the back end is going to be a queen. Uh, the last camper we had was a 10 foot, this one's a 12, so that's the difference. So I think uh, the last one we had would have been a queen up front and like a full size in the back. So this one's a little bit bigger. Um, for outside lighting, it's got this nice LED strip underneath here, under, right underneath the awning. And uh, that's really nice, it gives you plenty of light out in front here, so if you have to use the bathroom or something at night, it puts out enough light that you can see. Steps are good. The grab handle, I don't even think anyone uses it going in and out. There's another uh, light here. Um, we haven't really used that. Here's the model. You want to take a look at that. But, uh, they're all kind of the same, uh, these pop-ups. They're all, all pretty much the same. This one just has the, like I said, that off-road package type deal. And like I said, we had it used, so some of the jacks jacks are bent up here you can kind of see how that one's bent and i don't know if that's from someone not chalking the wheels or if they forgot the jacks were down and they tried to move the trailer so this one did come with a full-size spare which is nice and then over on this side you got your connections here for water there's an ac prep this is going to be for your 30 amp uh, this is a like a TV port for an antenna or whatever for coax, and then your connections here. 
There is a shower, like an outdoor shower here, hot cold water there, back of your refrigerator, and this is going to be for your water heater, which we have we haven't used any of that. We brought our own water. We didn't uh, use any of that. And then there's also like a sprayer. You can hook that up for uh, like spraying off your feet and stuff like that. That's not heated. That's just room temperature or whatever the temperature outside is. So this one does have a water heater. The last one we had didn't. The last one didn't have this outside shower either. So, I mean, I guess you could get a like a surround and set it up alongside so you could shower outside if you really wanted to. So, a um, couple of reasons why we bought this one is it, it was used. I didn't want to buy the new one and take the, the $15,000 hit on a new one and then as soon as I drive it off the lot lose about seven to 8000 probably. Um, this one was in pretty good shape for being used. Um, we had two new mattresses installed or it came with two new mattresses so the mattresses that were original to it were replaced. They're both heated so that's nice. Um, and also the storage on the front here, that's really why we wanted it. It makes a, a big difference when you want to haul stuff. And on the inside there's a, a decent amount of storage as well. We'll take a look at that. Alright, so this is just the standard door here. And then when you first come in, there would be a fire extinguisher, but ours was no good, so they replaced it and moved the location. Um, over here is the radio. And I disconnected that because um, there's no reason for that to be on. When you have the battery hooked up, it'll always be drawing power. So I disconnected that. And I believe I took... Nope, that I just disconnected. These two switches here, one of them does the awning. The other one, there's like a an option for a built-in like Wi-Fi booster. And this would be to turn it on. So there's power that comes to this. And then it's like must be pre-wired to the roof where the little panel is. I disconnected that and I actually added a another USB charging port so that one we can turn on and off. So again, that's not drawing on the battery the entire time, just so that the battery is uh, lasting as long as it would, or batteries I should say. And then when you first come in, there's a compartment here, which is kind of shady. We got the uh, outdoor shelf unit and the grill. Um, the grill's not a long, I don't think we'll ever use that. It's got a nice spot here for your matches in the door. And this goes back quite a ways, which is nice. Gives you a lot of storage. And then coming around this way, there's another compartment, plenty of storage. And like I said, we didn't really set this up. This is our first trip with this thing. And we're finding that a lot of the stuff we have in the tubs could probably just go in these cabinets. So, you know, we got some stuff in here, but you could put silverware and plates and all that stuff. Your uh, utensils. So, would be nice. You got a speaker for the stereo. Um, so, yeah, the stereo I don't use at all. I just bring a portable radio. That way it's not too loud. I can uh, set the volume to, I want, to what I want and it doesn't bother anybody else at the campsite. More storage over here for stuff. Down there is going to be for your water heater, switch or whatever. You got another another one here. We just got some lighters for the gas stove. That's an access panel for your water heater on the back side. Refrigerator. We talked about actually just removing this because it's it's so small, and we we got enough coolers that we just pack them with ice, and it, they seem to last. Wear that. Maybe it'll maybe it would work, but it seems like a lot of messing around to You know fill something up that that that's that size. It just doesn't seem like it's worth the, the hassle and then you gotta You gotta pre chill everything because this won't keep up otherwise, so I'm just not gonna do that another uh, storage in here This one's kind of cheap cheaply put together with these plastic guides. They got the Controls for the heated mattress in there. This is just kind of like another little generic storage underneath your sink. Be your furnace down there and then there's a small small spot to put some stuff there as well. So over on this side here we have a 
pretty long couch and there's all sorts of storage underneath there so we got our bug sprays sunscreen I got a stand for the Coleman stove which we're just using a picnic table so that's just kind of long for the ride that one back here I don't quite understand why they got that drawer right in front of that leg you have to like pull the leg ahead to get it open so like this this whole area here is all storage they should have just moved that over a little bit you got another speaker on this side this here is going to be your dinette over in here this is your switch for your water pump this is the USB charging that it came with and then there's also the the carbon monoxide detector and that's always on when the batteries are hooked up so there's always a draw on that so I do have a, a trickle charger that I have hooked to the batteries I don't trust the uh, built-in charger I don't want it to overcharge the battery so I got it on a, a trickle charge so this here is your I don't know if I'm gonna get that there you go like your breakers your fuses all that type of thing and this is what will convert your AC power to DC for your DC appliances and it's also supposed to uh, charge your batteries like I said I just kind of take that out of the mix and I'm not even worry about it another outlet back in there this outlet right underneath there this dinette just folds down you know and there's there's storage under under both of these as well so there is a lot of storage if we come up on top these are LED these are very bright there's four of them it will absolutely illuminate the entire cabin here this is for a it's like a fan light type deal it's on a curly Q cord you can plug it in you can pull it down to where you need to smoke alarm I pulled the battery on that it was just going off for no reason so we'll probably just get rid of this small one buy a new one fantastic fan which is anything but it's loud noisy and it just draws a lot of uh, amps so I don't even mess with that we just leave it alone so other than that that's pretty much the the tour here of the inside um, otherwise it's not bad I mean we like this one because it's got a lot of a lot of storage so that's nice you know the cook cooktop we can talk about that it's just LP works pretty good just use your uh, match light it up it's not like a self light or anything like that and the sink will probably never use that just drains outside and you have the water pump and the tanks and I think this has a I think it's a 27 gallon fresh water tank there is no gray or black water tanks it just drains outside but we have our own system for that so I don't know that we'll ever ever mess with that I guess we could I don't know maybe we'll see so in the way of like pulling, um, I would say any uh, like a full framed SUV wouldn't have a problem with pulling this like a uh, Toyota 4Runner or a Nissan Xterra um, depending on how, how heavy you get the tongue. Uh, my 1500 Ram here I don't have any type of air suspension or helpers or anything it's just the original coil springs or stock factory coil springs. Um, like I said I do have the uh, hitch here flipped over just to try to keep it level because it does does put some weight on the bumper there or on the back of the truck when you get it loaded up but in the way of pulling it's it's like nothing it this pulls that like there's nothing behind there at all even with everything that we had loaded the the three coolers loaded with ice we had uh, 14 gallons of water we brought along actually it was probably more than that probably fifth, closer to 15 or 16 gallons of water. I mean, there's in a tool chest with tools, spare parts, that type of thing. Yeah, it, it, there was no problem pulling it. We went up some pretty good hills on the, the way out here, so. So we try to keep it somewhat primitive when we camp. I do like my Coleman appliances and we like the tripod, that type of stuff. And these are, uh, they're nice sights. A lot of trees gets you right in the mix here all right so there's the light bar that runs across the awning there you can tell it puts out a 
fair amount of light right in front there so when you want to walk in gives you uh, plenty of light in the front storage area here there's a work light so if you want to check over your stuff or the LP tanks batteries that type of thing there's a nice work light there and if you don't have the light bar on or the awning light there's this orange light too that illuminates the steps pretty well it's supposed to keep the bugs down as well so right now we have two camp lights that aren't part of the camper they're just separate we use those sometimes um, I will have all four uh, ceiling lights turned on here so that is all four lights turned on so you can tell it illuminates not only the center but both of the uh, sleeping ends there the bunk ends so those are really too bright for night if you're gonna get up to use the bathroom or something I wouldn't even turn those on because you're just gonna blind yourself all right so the Alexander hydroelectric power plant owned by Wisconsin Public Service is actually in the uh, council ground state park here um, I think they call it Alexander because it's Lake Alexander but it's actually the Wisconsin River that runs through here they kind of all meet up together so we'll take a take a closer look all right so there's the building I'm not sure when this went into commission here I would guess the 30s or 40s just based on how the windows look there everything looks pretty original it looks pretty old uh, there's three three units that generate uh, 4.2 megawatts and I do know that if the water is it's either too fast or too high they have to bypass just because it will burn out the generators so there's a kind of a happy medium on how much water you have and the speed of the water when you're operating a hydroelectric. They also have a uh, canoe portage here. Pretty nice one actually. One of the nicest ones I've seen. Usually it's just a kind of a path that takes you down to a body of water. This one's pretty nice. In comparison to other state parks it's probably one of the smaller ones uh, definitely smaller in size but I think that it makes up for the fact that it's on the water here a lot of people in the campsite brought their boat and their camper so they had two vehicles um, there's a boat launch there's parking there's a beach there's swimming there's all sorts of places to launch canoe um, any type of water stuff you want to do which is really nice so that really makes up for it and uh, I wasn't really familiar with this state park, but this is uh, one of my favorites now.